Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market prep video for March 2nd, 2020. Holy cow, can you believe we are at March? And what a ugly beginning to March we are starting to show. Let's take a look at what's going on, settle in, and get ready for the morning edition of the morning market prep video. So this morning, everyone, we are looking at a market that is just all over the place. We have had futures positive this morning. We have had futures sharply negative this morning. And they're bouncing around. They started this volatile price action overnight in the futures, and that has continued um, all night long. And we continue to whip back and forth as the uncertainty of this market continues to plague uh, traders and investors trying to decide what to do next. We have been down um, several hundred points. We have been up more than 100 points. And right now, as I'm recording this, we're only down a hundred and oh, 20 points or so bouncing around significantly. Um, the issues that we have are certainly um, valid about the uncertainty. Um, we're probably right at the beginning of this, this outbreak in the United States. Over the weekend, we learned that we have 70 infections here in the United States. We have had two deaths in Washington state. Um, of these infections. So um, we're right at that beginning and, and the sporadic outbreaks in several places. We've got them in New York and, uh, and Washington and Rhode Island and all kinds of places around the United States as this continues to uh, spread out. What that means for us, I think, you know, nobody knows. And that's the problem. It's just the uncertainty of what's going on. One thing I will say is this uncertainty is going to create tremendous price volatility and we are subject to very very quick reversals based on news for example there is a huge amount of speculation a huge amount of hope that we're going to get central bank intervention that the fed's going to come in riding on its white white horse and start passing out money and rate cuts and um, probably some quantitative quantitative easing. Now that may be the case and we could get a nice relief rally as a result of that. But what we have to remember is all of the impacts from this virus are still yet to be seen. So be really, really careful in rushing in or blindly rushing into any trade. We're going to have to be extremely focused and realize that the price action is quick. And any news report could reverse the market very, very quickly. So plan your trading very carefully if you choose to trade. And one thing I don't want to remind everyone again, that cash is a position. You know, one of our primary jobs as traders is to make sure that we don't lose our capital. If we lose our capital to the market, obviously we're done. And probably one of the better things for a lot of folks, um, if you're inexperienced or not familiar with the kind of speed that the price action is moving at right now, would be to stand aside, protect your money, and avoid jumping headlong into this risk. So that being said, let's take a look at some technicals of the chart and see what we have going on here um, to pay attention to. As you can see, we dropped pretty substantially here on Friday, dropping down into this little price support in the chart, as you can see hit that price support and we ended up catching that rally, um, a nice rally up. But one thing I wanna point out is the only thing we really did is bounce back up into price resistance. So this morning we are looking at a little bit of a gap down right now. We could be moving a bit lower. That volatility means that we could see this, um, you know, push higher trying to breach that resistance. It also tells us we have, um, a high opportunity that we could 
even see new lows. Now, if that were to occur, if we were to drop into these new lows, watch that price support right in there if we come down for a retest, or if we get that good bullish news, you know, that the FOMC is going to come riding in and, and save us here, then we could catch some rallies back up. But let's keep in mind, we, we have built a tremendous amount of resistance levels as we go higher. So even though we may get a nice relief rally and bounce back on some kind of Fed intervention, um, just be well aware of the fact that there are significant levels of resistance above that we're going to have to deal with in the chart. This is going to be a rough process, I believe. And I believe that is because out in front of us is nothing but uncertainty. What are the next numbers going to come in? What are we going to see in, in economic numbers? Is this How is this going to affect um, employment? How is this going to affect supply chains? And as we um, continue to stretch this out, it could be very, very challenging in the days and even weeks ahead. So be very, very careful. Let's take a look at the SPY. SPY had a nice little relief rally back and once again, bouncing right back up into this price resistance here in the chart. And then we stopped. This morning we're looking at a little bit of a gap down, nothing major, but a little bit of a gap down. And that puts us into that situation. We could get that swing back higher. We could test the lows. Um, anything is possible here today. So watch that very closely. And if you decide to trade, just realize that if we do begin to uh, come back up and rally back up. We've got a lot of price resistance levels in the chart to deal with here. Let's take a look at the Qs. Now the Qs did a pretty good job of rallying back yesterday or on Friday as well, bouncing right back up here into that price resistance right there. And we stopped. So let's focus on that just a little bit. Um, we can see that the NASDAQ is holding up quite well in comparison to the other indexes. We're trying to stay positive in the NASDAQ and those big techs uh, definitely have been a driver of the market here for some time and they're really trying to hold this market up right now. But remember, as we rally back, there's going to be a lot of resistance levels and any news event could completely reverse us intraday and we should be expecting big morning gaps pretty much every morning as we still try to deal with the uncertainties of uh, what this means for our market going forward. Let's take a look at IWM. IWM didn't do as well. Um, we had a nice little rally at the end, um, uh, or intraday rally back up, but you can see IWM gave most of that up later in the day on Friday. The good news is, is we did hold this price support right in here. And if you take a close look, we're pushing back down here this morning just a little bit. We may test this level of support again. Let's see if that can actually hold. Um, otherwise, we may drift lower. Now, if we drift lower, in IWM, please keep in mind, we could drift substantially lower um, in that. So let's hope we get some buying stepping in here, a little bit of relief, and watch these resistance levels above if we start coming up. Let's take a look at the VIX. That VIX, oh my goodness, what a mess we have here. And you guys know that I've been talking about the real selling would come in after we held support in here someplace. I had no idea we'd have selling like this. And we jumped right up here, almost touched the 50 handle here in the, the VIX, um, way up here. So fear is strong. And then by the end of the day, we pulled back just holding on to a 40 handle. Now, what does that mean? Well, what that means is volatility is really high. That means price action can be very, very swift. We should also be um, very aware that um, if you're an option trader, all of your options are going to be high priced. We can expect wider bid ask spreads. We can expect very, very challenging price action. So keep that in mind as you think about moving forward here and if you're thinking about putting some risk in the market what that actually means with the volatility that we're going to be dealing with.
as I'm speaking, we were down about 120 points, 130 points. Now Dow Futures is only down 50 points. And we're just whipping all over the place. So in just a matter of minutes, we we whipped um, um, about 100 points up. So just keep in mind how quickly we can reverse and move back down as well. Big, big price swings. Going to be really challenging for most folks to trade. Let's take a look at T2122. T2122 is the four week new high, new low ratio. And as you can see, this is one of the encouraging indicators right now in the market. We're down here bouncing around right on the ocean floor here, scraping the bottom here, suggesting that we should get some kind of a rally. Um, whether we'll actually get a tradable rally, that's to be, uh, well, uh, that's the question. Will we, will we be able to um, get a tradable rally because of the extreme volatility that we're experiencing in the market? Or will we see um, a more um, sideways choppiness, um, even the potential of news-driven downside moves? I don't know. We're going to have to be pretty quick on our feet in this market. I do know that. Um, because as, as I was saying that, we jumped up positive over 30 points in the Dow. And now we're back down to flat. So really, really wild price action here in the market that we're going to have to try and deal with. And I can tell you for me, um, this is not my wheelhouse and I'm not afraid to say that. Um, trying to jump into this kind of whip um, is just it's not my game and I plan to um, be very very careful mostly standing aside um, waiting for this to clear up because what I know is eventually this will, will clear up and there'll be better days and I would rather wait and preserve my capital when the market's whipping back and forth like this and wait for those better trades to come where I have higher probabilities of a win that's just me you make your decision it's going to be I think a very challenging market um, in uh, today and and maybe in the days forward let's take a look at our economic calendar today we do have some things on our economic calendar it could be kind of interesting to see how um, these things unfold as we go throughout the week now our economy here in the United States is, is strong there's no doubt about that but we may start seeing some of these numbers um, or fear um, start to trickle into some of these numbers. We have the PMI manufacturing report this morning, um, ISM manufacturing as well, and construction spending that could move the market around here a little bit. We have quite a few little reports uh, throughout the week, but probably the big thing this week is going to be that employment situation number on Friday. And it's going to be interesting to see if we could begin to see some job effect uh, from the virus and companies slowing down because of supply chain issues or whatnot um, going forward. It may not be in this report. It may be in future reports next month where we actually see those impacts. And that's uh, another one of those unknowns, what comes next kind of thing for the market. So watch that closely. On the earnings front, we have about 130 companies reporting earnings today. They're going to be coming in fast and furious. Now, whether or not the market's going to be focusing on them, I really don't know. But we'll want to watch that pretty closely as they come out. Few few charts to make note of would be like JD JD reporting this morning. It looks like it's gapping higher this morning. Got a good report here on JD, so keep an eye on that chart. And um, we have TLRY. If you're um, one of those uh, folks that are pursuing cannabis stocks, um, TLRY. I'm trying to move up here this morning. This is a pretty ugly downtrend here overall, so I don't know that that would be too exciting here this morning um, at all. Um, GSKY um, reporting today. Looks like we have a really wide bid-ass spread here right now. No report on that number just yet. UNIT 
um, we'll also be reporting. It doesn't look like that has reported um, yet as well. So a few of those uh, kind of notables that will be out there. We have a big week with Target and things like that net tomorrow. A lot of retail we'll see this week coming in to the earnings. We'll have to see how that affects the overall trade um, as retail starts to report. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a great day of trading. And even though I plan to do a lot of standing aside here, I may do some quick intraday trading. But I got to tell you guys, I mean, it takes some experience to, to do that effectively, to make any money. And with the speed of this market, even though I have quite a bit of experience at doing it, I got to tell you, um, the speed of these moves may make it so it's not even worth uh, trying to jump in on some kind of quick intraday trades so be very very careful remember the market can whip both ways we can go up we can go down very very quickly so if you do decide to trade make sure to remember that you may want to have a mix of trades either long and or both long and short uh, because of the volatility in this market it can well it's just going to be challenging that's all there is to it so make sure you uh, plan carefully and remember everyone that cash is a position that just because the market is open doesn't mean you have to be risking your money in this market. You can stand aside, protect your capital and wait for better days. Um, and that's probably what I'll be doing um, uh, largely here today is just waiting for better days. I may be looking for some quick intraday stuff, but not going to be uh, really throwing a lot of money out there at risk at all. Be more of a more in a protection mode. So if you find these videos to be helpful, if you could do me a favor, if you could click that subscribe button on YouTube, also click that thumb, uh, the bell icon um, when it pops up so you can make sure and be noticed, notified every time I post one of these videos. And if you find the video worthy, please do me a favor and click those thumbs up buttons and leave a brief comment. Now, one of the things I'm going to mention is if you want to trade, um, what I'm going to suggest is you're probably going to have to go to some of the short term charts to see um, these rebounds. So let's take a look at um, a chart like Microsoft. Now, Microsoft is a very, very strong company, and I think most everyone believes Microsoft is not going to go way there's not a massive impact here to Microsoft um, based on the, the vi virus at least their company holdings being mostly cloud and, and gaming and things like that, that that make up the bulk of Microsoft's earnings had a nice rally back here on Friday let's take a look at a short-term chart how could we deal with this trade well for me, I'm going to need to see Microsoft prove a support. Now, anything here in this gradient area is overnight price action, and that will all clear up here when the market opens. So breaking above this downtrend, I think, on a 15-minute is very, very important. And I'm going to need to see some proof that we're actually going to be able to hold and that is support. If I can see that hold of support and buyers coming in, there may be an opportunity for some quick trades. What I will tell you is if you look at little longer term charts, there's still a lot of work here to be done. We have um, an hourly chart trying to show us that little price support. If buyers can actually hold that up, start pushing this up, there may be an opportunity, but we have tremendous levels of resistance above that we're going to have to deal with still. And and a four hour and daily, just lots and lots of technical damage here in this chart. So if you are planning to trade, you may have to look to some of those shorter term charts to try and pick out some of those early entries into trades. And a thing that I might suggest is that we look to some of these old boring companies like Microsoft, um, like uh, maybe Coca-Cola, um, like, um, 
you know, CLX. Um, some of these old boring companies that pay a pretty substantial dividend. These are companies that may come back a little bit faster, a little bit easier. And with the dividend payment, uh, when folks are nervous, they tend to run to these defensive sector stocks for a little bit of safety. Now, one thing I got to tell you is everything was drawn into this sell-off pretty heavily. If we take a look at our transports, our transports have just been absolutely crushed um, in this move. And um, we're just seeing lots of technical damage here in the chart. So if you're not a very quick intraday trader, it may be wise to just stand aside and let things settle out a little bit, to find out where this actually rests or ends up before you jump into the market. So with that, everyone, I wanna wish you all a great day. Be very, very careful, protect your capital. Futures right now are back down, uh, down uh, 39, 40 points uh, down. So we crossed up 30, 40 points. Now we're back down 30, 40 points. We're seeing tremendous tremendous volatility in this market this morning. Be careful. All right, everyone, take care of yourselves. I wish you all the best, and we'll see you right back here bright and early Tuesday morning. Have a good one.